The biggest night of the season for the two-litre National Saloon stock cars sees around 70 cars gather at Milton Hall Stadium in Suffolk for the 2021 Championship of the World. Drivers are here from England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and as far away as Germany to do battle tonight. To see who has the right to wear the gold roof for the next 12 months. The biggest names in the sport are here and a very hard-hitting night of racing is in prospect. This is going to be an absolute cracker. First of all, we'll have the last chance race where the top six qualify into the main event, the World Championship. Then in the second part of our programme, the consolation, the meeting final and the Grand National. An absolute belter of an evening's racing in prospect on this tight and tricky shale oval here in Suffolk. We are ready for the last chance race then. Six places in the world final up for grabs. Jack Rust and one in car 172 and number five Tam Rutherford from Scotland are on the front row of the grid. Watch out for the Morphy family, Will and Charlie starting towards the back there. One of them smoking a bit already. That's 129 Will Morphy starting alongside the 192 car there. We are underway then over 16 laps with this last chance race. Runs for a big crowd here at Milton Hall. Tam Rutherford gets away well, so does Wes Starmer in the 525. And already a couple of cars being sent into a spin. 370 was one of them, Rowan Venny. Another car gets taken round. That's Danny McCluskey in 316. 527 Ashton Armstrong is uh, on the infield. There's more cars going in there. You get the impression that these drivers don't care about qualifying for the world final or indeed where they finish they just want to smash into each other as much as possible and that's the ethos of saloon stock car racing jack rust has taken the lead in the audi bodied car there most of these cars ford mondeos and sierras under all the armoring a couple of audis in there and jack rust leading in one of them uh, 350 in third place that's tom parrin they start to settle down then the yellow flags are out already and a couple of cars stranded there danny mccluskey and uh, scotsman alan ainsley in the Triple seven car stuck there. So the yellow flags come out. The cars will uh, move into single file, ready for the restart. The track will be cleared by the marshals. Ashton Armstrong stuck on the infield on the bank there as well. We saw a couple of more, couple more cars go in there as well. Try and see what happened there. Danny McCluskey just climbed up the armco. So did uh, who's that in front of him? Tricky to see the numbers on one or two of these cars. Oh, Tom Yule, number 214. Ashton Armstrong was already there on the inside on the infield bank. Wesley Starmer, 525, involved as well. And then we see it again. They hit the Armco here at Milton Hall because it's relatively low Armco. They just climb up it. Rollovers can be quite common here. 697 was uh, another man to get taken out there, Jordan Cassie. So a few casualties already then. Don't forget the top six go through to the world final. We get underway again. Tom Yule under fire from the 610 car. That's Trent Arthurton. 192 gets spun aside there. That is uh, Rob Heans. Battle is on. Will Brazier under fire from the Morphys. 328 Michael Boswell in this fight as well. Tom Howard behind them, number 30. And also in there, 319 Richard Regan. He's bangers for many years. Grumpy as he's known from his uh, days in the bangers. He won't be very grumpy if he qualifies for the world final. Rowan Venny under fire from Michael Boswell. Tom Howard in there as well. Jack Russ still leads the way though in car 172 up front. Grumpy battling with Rowan Venny and Michael Boswell. This is the main scrap at the moment in the midfield. The Morphys have uh, moved ahead of them. Very tricky to follow these races though so I apologise if I miscall anything. Grumpy gets spun out there. Richard Regan and Michael Boswell. Well he will be grumpy now won't he? He won't be qualifying for the World final. 261 Dom Davies under fire. Also in there, Ivan Streets, number 420. We've not seen him out yet this season, a veteran saloon stock car racer. And wallop straight in goes the 298 car there, Ian Elms, getting put away. Is anyone going to go in on him? No, it doesn't look like it. West Starmer getting to grips with the number five of Tam Rutherford there. He's going to have Trent Arthurton stuffed into him by Tom Parrin in the 350. Arthurton gets through on the inside. Still your leader is Jack Russ, number 172, and here we go on the, at the turn there, wallop into the back of the 298, goes Trent Arthurton. They just don't care, do they? They'll smash into anything, these races. Now we've got another schmozzle down the back straight, so Alan Ainsley's in the middle of that, Grumpy's on the infield in 319. Uh, 447 Adam Hicks we saw get smashed up there, and he gets nailed by the race leader. Is Jack Russ going to get through there? I think he is. It's uh, 126 Harry Barnes in second place, one of three Barnes brothers 
in this meeting tonight. The grandsons of the uh, legendary Horry Barnes, Britain's longest serving oval racer. That's where a couple of years ago at the grand old age of 90 did the great Horry Barnes. And there's Jack Russ still leading the way, number 172. With a name like Rust, you'd think he'd be a banger racer, wouldn't you? Choosing to stick with the saloon stock cars. Richard Regan slowing up there in 319, trying to pull to the centre. He hits Harry Barnes in number 126. We'll see his brothers Timmy and Tommy Barnes out later on in the world final. They've qualified. Trying to make it to three brothers, but we've got a stoppage here. We've got a fire on Jordan Cassie's car there in the background, and uh, oh, and he throws the uh, bit that's causing the fire away there. Well done, Jordan Cassie, helping the marshals to fight the fire. You can see whatever was on fire, he's pulled away from the car there, preventing a much larger incident. 447, we see getting spun into the wall. That's Adam Hicks in replay. Alan Ainsley involved as well. It was one of the Morphys, Will Morphy, who put the bumper in there. Charlie following in behind in the 92. Up and over the infield went... Richard Grumpy Regan, mind our camera. Fair play to our cameramen, they do get very close to the action as you can see. But the stoppage was for Jordan Cassie, number 697. This car catching fire. We see that bit of mayhem again. Richard Regan goes flying over the infield. Jordan Cassie went in on Alan Ainsley, and then uh, it was his air filter on the bonnet there that caught fire. He removed that uh, to allow the marshals to fight the fire. So it's Jack Russ from uh, Harry Barnes. It's like it's Shane Emerson, number triple eight, up behind them. I'm not sure if uh, any of these cars are a lap down. Very difficult to follow, especially with such a, sh a short track here at Milton Hall. It's one of the smaller tracks in UK stock car racing. We know Jack Rust is leading in the Audi A4 bodied car there. And it's uh, Harry Barnes, the youngest of the Barnes family in this formula, in behind him. Horry Barnes started the uh, tradition of stock car racing in the Barnes family back in the 1950s. Back underway then over the final four laps. There's Tom Yule, number 214, coming through. With a couple of spinners. Tam Rutherford, who started on the front row, is one of them. Wes Starmer attacking uh, Rowan Venny in the 370. Not sure what lap Rowan Venny's on, whether he's up there in third or not ahead of uh, Wes Starmer. So when there is Dom Davies, number 261, Tom Yule, 214. Uh, the Morphy boys as well. They've been trying to remove everybody else throughout this race. Still the top two remain the same. They're coming around to start their final lap. It's looking good for Jack Rust in at number 172. He's heading for the back of the world final grid. Six cars to qualify to join the 30 who are already in the race. Harry Barnes giving chase. The battle the third between Venny and Starmer by the look of it. Then we've got Charlie Morphy in the final turn. Morphy on the inside and wallop, in we go. They all go out. There's more cars spinning off behind. Well, it's as if nobody wants to qualify for the world final. What a complete mess there on the final turn. Well, we know the top two got over the line of uh, Jack Rust and Harry Barnes. I've no idea beyond that. I don't know who's qualified because everybody else seemed to spin out on the final turn. Uh, we saw Nathan Olden 364 cross the line backwards. Impressive if he's qualified doing that. Even the start marshal's not sure. I think the race has come to its conclusion. Yes, Jack Rust, the winner. There's the red flag going out to conclude this race. So Jack Rust has won it. Uh, Barnes in second. And then behind them, well, Will Morphy, uh, Charlie Morphy rather, just seemed to take everybody else out. First he spun out Rowan Venny and Wes Starmer in one move. And everybody, everybody else just piled in behind them. Tom Yule might have got in. He got through there on the inside in 2-1-4. And beyond that, beyond that, I don't know. Nathan Alden got sent spinning out by Trent Arthurton. And then everybody else just piled in behind them. I don't know who's got through. Confirm that in a moment. Complete mayhem there at the end of our last chance qualifier. We know Jack Rust has won it by half a second ahead of Harry Barnes. Harry Barnes, rather. Tom Yule in third. Then Dom Davies, Wes Starmer and Ivan Street complete the qualifier. Just missing out Michael Boswell, Will Morphy, Nathan Alden and Shane Emerson completing the top 10. Last chance race winner, 172, Jack Rust, you've got to be delighted that that's got you on the grid. Yeah, well, I'd like to be on it in the first place, but this will have to do. And if that race is any indication of what the World Final's going to be like, that, you could still win it from the back. Well, that's probably one of the better places to be sometimes. <laughs>
It was it was action packed from start to finish, but you kept your head on the restarts. You were there, and you just got away then, didn't you? Well, you got to from the front. We just peek there and get away, and hope no one's behind you. <laughs> and what's the strategy now for the big race itself? Push. Well, I'll just see how it pan out. We'll pick the gaps and hope we get up there. <laughs> well, best of luck. We'll be keeping an eye on you. <laughs> Cheers. Well, it is now time for the main events, the 2021 Saloon Stock Cars Championship of the World, even a fly pass from the US Air Force. They have a base just next door to Milden Hall. Before the race gets underway, let's hear from some of the leading contenders. The man sitting on pole position for the world final, 600 Barry Russell. After that last race, I don't know whether that's an advantage or a disadvantage. It'll work out, I'm sure. It's not where you start, it's where you finish. That's exactly right, isn't it? But I think it's going to be a bit chaotic, isn't it? Well, it'll be lively. That's one thing that will be around Melbourne Hall, anyway. You have good shale form as well, so you'll, you'll be fancying yourself for it. I don't mind the shale or the tar, so just let's be having it, eh? Yeah, as long as you're involved in somewhere, that'll be enough. It, the thing about stock cars, taking part's good, winning's even better, and social life's even better. Well, Win, lose, you have a smile and yeah. best of luck. And I'll always keep coming back. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers. Outside front row, 7.30, Dean Mays. Is that a good place to be? Uh, it's probably not the best, but it's probably not the worst. Just got a hope for uh, just a little break at the start, really. Yeah, it's, it's going to be chaotic, and it, we've just spoke to Barry as well, and it's like, it's not, it's not who wins, it's who survives, I think. Yeah, it, it's a matter of survival. Surviving first two laps and then you just got to get, get your head down and try and get through. And of course, you are leaning on a, a brand new car there as well, which looks absolutely superb. Yeah, that's not the one for tonight. The uh, tried, and, tried and trusted Faithful is, is what I'm using tonight, but we thought we'd bring this and give it a ride out tomorrow. Well, I'm sure the race is going to be exciting and I'm sure you'll enjoy it, whatever happens. Yeah, whatever happens, you know, I'll come off with a smile and I, I enjoy the racing. It's an awesome track to race around. Yeah, definitely. Exactly how it should be, and best of luck. Cheers, thank you. 153, Nick Antwerpen. Something of a rarity these days, but you're actually a foreign entrant for a world final, and it's really good to see. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's good to be here. I had uh, three meetings before at Kings Lynn. Um, we would have raced at Venray tomorrow on the Sunday, but uh, I chose to come to the world final as we are on the grid. We qualified um, through the Dutch point system. So, uh, yeah, we decided to take the spot and race here at Milnall. Having watched that last race there, I don't know if you might have changed your mind now. <laughs> uh, no, well, saloon stock cars are always great action. You know, we all step in and know that it's probably the hardest formula out there on the ovals. Um, and that's no different in Holland. So we're used to it and we love it. <laughs> and you've certainly made a big commitment. I mean, you've, you're the furthest traveled by a long way, having come all the way from Germany. Yeah, um, yeah it was a lot of paperwork due to the Brexit and to the coronavirus. Um, yeah, we had to do a carnet for the customs and uh, a COVID test and so on. But um, yeah, it's great to be here and I love it and it was definitely worth it already. Well, hopefully your traveling will be worth it and you'll have a really good race. We'll do our best, you know, it's a lottery out there. First five laps are hard. Um, yeah, it's a bit of luck that's needed on the night on the, in the race, but we'll see how it goes. Well, best of luck. Thank you. The most famous words in motorsport herald the two litre engines into life for the biggest saloon stock car race of the season, the championship of the world. Qualifying on pole position, number 600, Barry Russell from Scotland. The world rankings used to decide the grid. He leads them off alongside Dean Mays in 7-3-0. Ryan Santry and Cole Atkins on the second row, then Billy Smith and Buster Jr. Brad Compton Sage. There's Nick Antwerp and our German entry. Michael Allard could be a contender. Phil Powell from the West Country. Kieran McIver from Northern Ireland in 8-1-1. There's 171, Adam O'Dell. 170 entry, that's uh, another of our Northern Irish visitors, Ryan Patton. 131 is Timmy Barnes. Tommy and Harry Barnes somewhere down this lineup as well. Barry Glenn from Scotland alongside Marty Lake in 573. 570 is Simon Venny. Wonderful sight they make. There's our last chance qualifier. Just one change at the back. No Ivan Street. He hasn't made it out. Michael Boswell comes in in 328 as first reserve. Carl Boswell, number 84, already on the grid. Stuart Sheville from Scotland in 618. 
any one of these drivers could win it. Track fairly dry, in good condition. 36 cars out there in total for a 25 lap race. This is going to be absolute carnage. Any one of these drivers could win it. We could end up with only one finisher, the way the saloons normally race here at Milton Hall. 747, the leading Northern Irishman on the grid. That's Matt Sterling. It's Barry Russell from Scotland on pole. Fireworks go off from the back of the pickup trucks, leading them round. This is going to be one heck of a race. Who's going to be world champion 2021? I'm making no predictions whatsoever. We could end up with no finishers to this race if they wallop each other hard enough. I'm really looking forward to this. One more lap behind the pace truck, and then the pack will be unleashed. Here we go then. 36 cars, 25 laps. Let's get ready to rumble with the 2021 Saloon Stock Car Championship of the World. I bet half of them don't even make it to the green flag. No, they're going in already. Off turn four, there's cars absolutely everywhere. Who's got the lead? It is Barry Russell in 600 from pole position. Ryan Santry second. Looks like Matt Sterling up into third ahead of Billy Smith in the 161. Cole Atkins has dropped back from the second row in 399. Uh, the track has cleared on turn four. There's uh, Tommy Barnes in 26. Sterling's gone in 747 from third. That was a slightly cleaner start than I expected. 131 Timmy Barnes ploughs into somebody there. That takes out uh, Austin Freestone in 341 as well. Barry Russell's gone. The leader's gone down the home straight. So it's Ryan Santry. And uh, who's that coming through on the inside? Billy Smith in 161 who take it up. Adam O'Dell has gone as well. 153 gets um, spun aside. I think that's Ryan Wright. The other 153, of course, our German entry, Nick Antwerpen, who we heard from earlier on. This car's going towards the infield, into the tyres. Barry Glenn, Ryan, Ryan, oh, this car's going everywhere. It's as if nobody wants to finish this race, never mind win it. Another one goes in there. Barry Russell's got going again. I've, I've already completely lost track of who's leading this. Um, I think it might be Billy Smith in the uh, 161. We'll wait and uh, pick that up in a moment. There is Billy in the 161 car. Barry Russell still going in 600. Michael Allard behind him in 349. Somebody else, I think it was Carl Boswell, 84, got spun out in there. There's so much dust and smoke, most of it from Dom Davies's car there. Uh, Austin Freestone up on the infield. Billy Smith's gone. Billy Smith was in that tangle. Up the wall goes Barry Russell. Is he going to go over? Not quite. He's stuck on the wall there. Michael Allard slides out. Well, I don't know who's leading now. I'll... Uh, after what, I think it might be Dean Mays who's come through into the lead there in 7-3-0. Michael Allard was set to take the lead, but then he got sideways. We've got yellow flags out because of Barry Russell's car there on the wall on the back straight. So this will tell us who is leading. I completely lost track of that, I will admit. So the yellow out because Barry Russell, the pole sitter, stuck on the, on the armco on the back straight. But this is the incident going into turn three the lap before. Barry Glenn has got the brakes on there in 38. They're not doing any good because he's being pushed by um, Harry Barnes in the 126. Into the infield tyres he goes. About half a dozen more cars go off behind him. Jack Grandon, 277 in there. The 57 getting turned around. That's Georgie Bolt, Jr. And everybody else is piled in behind. And then a lap later, Barry Russell sent up the wall by Ross Waters and Tommy Barnes. And he ended up perched there on two wheels. OK, it is Dean Mays who leads in 7-3-0. Tommy Barnes, 26, is second. Michael Allard, third in 3-4-9. Then we've got Ross Waters and uh, number 120 of Luke Dawling. OK, here we go then with the restarts. What's going to happen this time? 1-3-1, Timmy Barnes on the attack there. Luke Dawling gets spun out to one of the Sampson family. That was Lee Sampson has gone with him. Tommy Barnes up the inside. Can he take the lead here from Dean Mays? Yes, down the inside into turn one. Tommy Barnes takes the lead of the world final. Michael Allard gives chase in 3-4-9. He's up the inside of Mays into second place. Cole Atkins has spun out there in 3-99. 26 of Tommy Barnes, who leads the way. He's going to be taken sideways. He's going to be spun around by Michael Allard. Well, that's allowed Dean Mays back into the lead in 7-3-0. Mays leads it, Allard second, Ross Waters in third now for Scotland in 6-7-0. Here we go in in turn three, Jack Rust being picked up by Luke Dawling and wallop straight in, we go and up and nearly over goes Jack Rust. The last chance qualifier winner is in the wall. 
start to sort themselves out. Buster Jr. has gone there in 9.02, but it's Dean Mays who leads the world final. Billy Smith rejoining there in 1.61 behind him. Now, I think we know what Billy Smith's going to do here. Is he going to turn three? Yep, takes him round, wallop into Jack Russell's car. That's all, that seems to be all Billy Smith does in title races, it has to be said. So who's leading now? Uh, I think it's Tommy Barnes again, but we'll wait and pick that up in a moment. It could be Michael Allard. One, it's one of the two. We watch the action further back. Billy Smith's got going again. There's the half-distance flag out, and uh, I think it's Michael Allard who's uh, got the lead now in 3-4-9, the British champion, looking for his first world title. Well, there goes uh, Nick Antwerp, and I think that is being taken out. And Michael Allard got spun out there. I saw Allard spinning. Smoke from Dom Davies's car as Mike, Marty Lake spins in 5-7-3. Right, who's leading this now? We'll pick that up in a moment. We saw Tommy Barnes get spun out, so it's not him. There's Dean Mays slowing up. I think we've gone yellow again. Yes, we have. Uh, the yellow is up on turn four. I think it's Austin Freestone who's gone into the wall up there in 3-4-1. Marshall's rushed to him, make sure he's OK. We'll pick up who's leading in a moment. Let's see what happened there to... 3-4-1, Austin Freestone. Oh, it was Billy Smith again. So I think Billy's trying to win this race by being the only car left. He's just trying to smash everybody else out of it. He does it in every title race, let's face it. Right, your leader is Timmy Barnes. Ross Waters in second. And Harry Barnes, who came through the last chance race, is third. Tommy Barnes is fourth. Three brothers in the top four places. I've never seen that before. Well, they instantly attack Ross Waters. He goes out wide, and now the brothers are one, two, three. Could we have three brothers lock out the podium? That's never happened before in any form of oval racing. There's Michael Allard. We saw him get spun out just before the yellows came out. It's getting pretty dusty out there now in this world final. We've got ten or so laps to go. But it's the Barnes family currently, I think, locking out the podium. There's Ryan Santry battling it out with 349 Michael Allard. Ross Waters in there as well. He got run wide on the restart by Harry Barnes. Somebody going backwards there. Matt Sterling in 747, the Irish champion. Left facing backwards on turn four. But it's Timmy Barnes, 131, who leads the world final. There he is into turn one. Second is Tommy Barnes, and there's Harry in third. Well, Timmy Barnes started 22nd on the grid. Tommy 11th, and Harry 32nd. He had to qualify through the last chance race. Could we see the Barnes family lock out the podium? Billy Smith, well, Michael Allard gets a bit of revenge on him there, takes Billy around. Ryan Santry over the curve there on the inside. He's battling it out with uh, one of the Vennies, whether that's Simon or uh, Rowan. No, it's Simon, 570 Rowan. He didn't get through the last chance race, of course. Jack Brandon threw on the inside in 277. They'll be coming up to five laps to go this time, and it's Timmy Barnes, 131. Could he be heading for goal? Billy Smith in uh, Diggy Smith's regular car. Diggy, of course, out of racing at the moment. Michael Allard gets spun out. So, so does Jack Randall. Allard going backwards. They're broken and bent cars littering the raceway. Timmy Barnes still leads. Tommy second. There's Harry in third. Can Dean Mays break into the 1 2 3 here for the Barnes family? He's trying. He led early on. Brian Santry is next in the order in 3 8 9. The East Anglians dominating here in Suffolk at Milton Hall Stadium in this world final. Can the Barnes family hang on? What a story this would be. I think we've got yellow flags again, though. The yellows are out. Carl Boswell tries to pull up and spins himself out. Now, the yellows, whether they're for... Uh, I think they might be for Matt Sterling there, 747. Marshall's making their way over to car 349 of Michael Allard as well. Where's Billy Smith? He's done his best to take out everybody in this race in the 161. Diggy Smith, of course, unable to defend his uh, World Championship from 2019 this year. Michael Allard spun aside there by Simon Venny in the 570. Yes, Stuart Shevill, 618, the Scotsman. We haven't seen much of him. Normally more proficient on tarmac. OK, three laps to go then. Timmy Barnes, Tommy Barnes, Harry Barnes. Can they hang on to make history? Never before in any oval racing formula have three brothers locked out the podium. Or indeed, three family members. Even the Waynemans haven't managed that in uh, Brisker F1, I don't think. 
Well, Dean Mays is going to try and do something about it. He fires Harry Barnes wide on the restart up the inside. He's into third place. His car's going everywhere behind. Stu Shevel moves through on the inside in 6-1-8. Ross Waters under fire from that man, Billy Smith. Four wide as they come off turn four. With Starmer, he came through the last chance race, moving through on the inside. Buster Jr. now attacks uh, Lee Sampson in 4-8. He's going to be taken round. Buster Jr. spins himself out. Now, where are the leaders? It is still Timmy Barnes who's got the lead. Looks like he's heading for the World Championship. Just a couple of laps to go as Ryan Santry takes out Ross Waters. Billy Smith left facing backwards again as well. Where are the leaders? Here they come. Timmy from Tommy. Dean Mays in third. And Harry Barnes is going to have to attack on the final turn if he's going to complete the 1-2-3. It's going to be a 1-2 for the brothers. Here they come. Tommy Barnes, he might have tried an attack here, but it's going to be Timmy Barnes who takes the World Championship. He takes the flag and Harry's up the inside as they come out the final turn. They've done it. The Barnes brothers take the 1-2-3. I don't believe it. Well, Tommy attacks there and gets through, but it's too late. Timmy has won it. Tommy second and Harry got third for the first time ever in oval racing history. Three brothers on the podium of a world final. That is unbelievable. We've got a car upside down on the back straight to end the race. I, I think that's Harry Barnes. It is Harry Barnes. He's upside down coming out of turn two. What a way to celebrate taking the podium in the world final. Rolling it after the flag. He has taken third. We'll see what happened there. He got leaned wide and uh, up off the fence. That was uh, Simon Venny. But the Barnes family have done it. Three brothers. Timmy, Tommy and Harry Barnes on the world final podium. What a story that is. History made here at Milden Hall tonight. That one was for Grandad Horry. He is looking down on them with great pride right now, I can assure you. Britain's longest serving oval racer, the great Horry Barnes. Racing on into his 80s. And I know he was looking after the family there. The win goes to Timmy ahead of Tommy and Harry. The brothers take the 1-2-3. Dean Mays, who led early on in fourth ahead of Simon Venny. East Anglians taking the top six places with Lee Sampson behind. Stu Shevel, the first Scotsman home in seventh. Then Wes Starmer, Carl Boswell and Jack Grandin complete the top ten. 2021 Saloon World Champion, 1-3-1 Timmy Barnes. That sounds good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, um, had a brilliant race. Obviously racing with the brothers as well. Um, Lucky enough, that was first first top three, which is unusual for you know a world final for all of us. So I was happy whether one of us win it or not, and it was lucky that I was in that place to win. But yeah, it's brilliant, brilliant race. Yeah, later on there was a stoppage. You were one, two, three. Then you must have looked in your mirrors and thought, well, one of us is having this. No, I ain't got a mirror. I never run one in the car, and I'll, that's the best thing I ever done because. I always go in that corner as hard as I can because I think someone's behind me and that's, that's how I won the race. I didn't, obviously didn't have no mirror, so it's easy forward from that. Well, this is the first time we've filmed a Saloon World Final for Premier Sports and it was certainly a cracker for the first one. Yeah, brilliant race. Like I said, the first few laps got spun out and thought, oh, this isn't my race. And then lucky enough, they stopped it, got up there a bit further, they stopped it again. And then I went from there, really, and that was... Five laps to go, I think, and hold it on tight and hope for the best. So. And then you've had a nervous couple of hours. I mean, they've literally took the car apart tonight to check it and everything's passed. You're all good. Yeah, we've gone obviously through the whole car, nuts and bolts. And um, yeah, boys have been helping me. You know what I mean? We've got, we're going to hopefully get it back together for tomorrow and have another go. But yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, I think there might be a small matter of a party somewhere in between then. Yeah, I'm definitely not driving home. I know that. <laughs> well, once again, congratulations. 2021 World Champion. I'd like to thank every, everyone who's helped. Um, Steve over with the fabrication, all my mates who's come round, and especially my wife, to be honest. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much. much. Cheers. Many congratulations to the Barnes brothers locking out the podium in this year's World Championship final. Wonderful scenes at the end of the race. There's still plenty more racing to come, of course. Happy scenes indeed. Three Barnes brothers on the podium. More racing to come then after a short break. Join us in part two.